I mean, if you're going to grapple with this question of something coming out of nothing, don't you also have to deal with the question of where do the laws of physics come from? Well, in, in, in my opinion, the more uh, conservative proposition is that the universe has always existed and always will. Uh, it seems to me a much more radical idea is to somehow explain how time began, which is almost a contradiction in terms. Um, if, I mean, so, if, the, if the universe has already always been here, then time had no beginning, right? That's right. So that seems the more, uh, like I say, the more conservative or minimal assumption. And so those, uh, the hypothesis is, you know, that time has always existed. And then you have to explain how it is that space managed to make sense when it was only one point, when all of space was at a point. That's the Big Bang singularity. How did that make sense? And uh, there are possibilities. There are mathematical possibilities. One of the ideas I'm exploring right now is the fact, is the, is the idea that just as there is no absolute time in, in physics, and we learned this in relativity, that different people will literally measure different time on their clocks, and there's no absolute space, different people will likewise see different versions of space. So maybe there's no absolute scale in physics. You know, we're all used to one meter or one kilogram uh, units. And a very natural idea is that there are no fundamental units in physics. These are uh, units which are a result of what, what we call symmetry breaking. That there's a symmetry under scales, which actual, actually Maxwell's theory has. That's why it has X-rays and radio waves and light waves, and they're all basically copies of the same thing on different scales. So that kind of scale symmetry can be brought into physics. And that's a very natural thing to use to explain how it is that space could be at a point and yet uh, still describable. Because when, when, if scale doesn't matter, then the fact that the space has all shrunk down uh, infinitely far doesn't matter either. And uh, our equations can still be perfectly valid. So uh, I'm, I'm trying to give a glimpse of mathematical approaches to handling this problem, which, which I believe are very promising uh, in sort of mathematical theory terms, but also experimentally testable. Well, Jim,